Okay, so what is the best safety stock formula? I got really confused the first time I was looking for, for this. So many mathematics and different methods. But yes, we do need safety to face all this uncertainty in this world regarding the demand, the lead time of the suppliers, the delays, the pandemic, the inflation. And in this video, I'm going to try to keep it very simple with example in Excel. I'm going to explain to you why it's important to have safety but not too much. What are the best methods and the one you can use today to start optimizing your inventory level, but also the service for your customer. Okay, so why do we need safety stock? We do need safety stock to prevent shortages and out of stock, right? You don't want to see this situation with your customers. And that's why we use the safety stock to mitigate against uncertainty. We have two kinds of uncertainty. We have the demand and we have the lead time. If you knew exactly what would be your demand, your, if your forecast accuracy was 100%, and if you knew exactly the lead time from your suppliers and all your supply chain, you would not need any safety stock, but this is not the world we're living right now. And that's why we're gonna, we're gonna cover these two uh, uncertainty level. So if I go back to the, the demand first, uh, this is, for example, the, the, the sales cards from the US market. And you can see that this is not a straight line. This is not like very, this is not always predictable. For example, during the last pandemic, we had a crash about 100% and then the sales went up by 120%. So this is this kind of uncertainty that you, you want to face. I mean, you want to try to face. So we do have different products with different level of uncertainty. We have very predictable products like toilet paper. If you don't have a pandemic, <laughs> we do use toilet paper every day. Or let's take the French baguette. French people like me eat baguette every single day. It's a very, very predictable and stable demand. Then we have more pr products with more uncertainty and products like very unpredictable for example for the umbrella you don't know why it's going to rain so you need to face uh, this demand with some uh, safety stock okay regarding the late time uncertainty i can tell you that the last few years were, were quite challenging right so many issues regarding the supply chain the suppliers the components the yeah the global chip shortage the Suez canal the inflation the pandemic the wars that was that was really challenging for us uh, you can you can confirm that and when we talk about lead time, it's not only about the transport. You have to be very careful uh, about the lead time. So quickly, I'm going to do a, a proper video regarding the lead time. But first of all, you have to be careful with the review period. That how often are you ordering the products? Then you have the IT confirmation of, for example, the purchase order with the shipment. Then you may go to the production factory. Then you have the picking and packing from your factory or warehouse. Then you may wait for your transport. It could be like sea freight or air freight. Then you have the custom, you have the transport again, and then you have the de delivery physically, but also IT delivery to make sure that your products is in the system in your ERP. But at the end, we have this total lead time and we do have a lot of uncertainty during all this process from the point where you need stock and the point that the customer will receive your products. So let's take one example. For example, you are, you are supplying products from China, you are in the US, and let's say like your average shipment lead time total will be 40 days, including everything, 40 days. So that's your average, but most of the time you will have like delays or sometimes you will have products in advance. So at the end, your, your average is not the right parameters to define how much stock you need. And you can have a lot of issues regarding the production, the transport, the custom, the reception, quality issues like product that disappear from your container, etc., etc. So the average is, is useful, but you also have to consider these uh, extreme cases like you could have like a product that takes 120 days to come because you don't have components or your, your shipment is blocked at the custom. And we're going to face that. But before jumping into the formula, I'd like to go back quickly to the economic order quantity. So that was my previous video. I was explaining how to optimize the quantity you want to order and the frequency. I recommend to watch this video if you didn't do it first. <laughs> but obviously, this, this formula does not consider any safety stock. So the idea is when when you have more like uncertainty regarding the demand or your suppliers, we want to secure that with the safety stock to make sure that we combine these two and we optimize in the same time the service for the customers, 
the, the cost of the inventory and the transaction cost to make sure that your company is profitable and to know when you need to reorder your products. We call that the reorder point. In this example, we will have to order not when you reach the safety stock level, but before. And for that, we're going to consider the lead time. And you need to order at this time to make sure that one, you get the products then you get back to your full EOQ per safety stock. So this is the reorder point formula. I'm going to give you more example in Excel just after that. But I can tell you that the reality looks much more like this. It can be messy. You can have like more issues. And sometimes, yes, even if you have a safety stock, you, you can have order of stock, which is fine. Sometimes you need to accept to be uh, to have all of stock, especially on a low sales and non-strategic products. Okay, so before we go into Excel, I just wanted to be very, very careful and to give you a big warning that safety stock is not the ultimate solution. And I can tell you that I've, I've been working with safety stock for the last 15 years in big and small companies. And most of the time I can see that safety stock is used to cover root cause problems such as very bad inventory management policy, poor forecast accuracy, unreliable suppliers, production delay, logistic issues, IT issues, too many manual processes and a big lack of communications, lack of skills and also lack of training. And the easy way is always like you see, we will come to you and say, okay, Edouard, you should increase your safety stock. Uh, you should increase your safety stock for all your products, but this is not possible because at the end, you will have this yo-yo effect and you will have a huge overstock that will hide these issues. And most of the time, the companies underestimate the, the real cost of the inventory. So be very careful with that. It's always easy to increase your safety stock but it's not easy to optimize and reduce them. So in this uh, video, I'm going to explain to you what are the best formulas and how to improve that. So the safety stock goal is not to increase the stock, but to find the balance between customer service or fill rate or availability rate and inventory cost. If you don't know about this KPI, I really recommend you to watch my two uh, YouTube videos regarding supply chain service, KPIs and inventory turnover ratio. This is really important that you track your performance to make sure you can then optimize and improve your parameters. Okay, so now let's calculate the six ways to calculate the safety stock. The first one is the old school formula for my grandpa. And uh, this is not the formula I recommend, but this is, I think, the most common formula. What is the formula? Is safety stock equal average sales, for example, per day, multiplied by the number of safety days. This is a manual parameter. You say, okay, let, let me five days of sales in safety. In this example, for example, you say, okay, 100 quantity per day, you have the lead time of 10 days and you have a safety, you want, you want a safety of five days. This is a manual parameter, so that's why I don't recommend it. And the safety will be 100 times five days, which is 500 quantities. And your real point will be your safety stock, so 500 plus the average sales, 100, multiply by 10 so it will be at the end it will be 1500 quantities for the reorder points so I'll just show you this example to really understand the process and then we'll we'll optimize this so in this example we have 10 days lead time the reorder point is 1500 and you are going to reorder the products here to make sure that when you receive the products you order like for example we do have an EOQ of 2000 quantities. So the idea is really to repeat this process and define the best formula for the safety stock. And then the real point is quite simple, it's automatic. So obviously I don't recommend the first formula because it's too basic, too manual, doesn't, doesn't consider the demand uncertainty, the lead time uncertainty, and you rely too much on experience and not data. And my advice is really, if you don't have any data, it's very, very complex. You can, you can keep it simple and use it at the beginning, but at least please use ABC and XYZ classification. I'm going to tell you more about this uh, method very soon. The second method is the prudent man method. Like you want to be a good father. You want to protect your family from any risk on this planet. And this is like the, the formula is quite simple. We're going to use the maximum of the sales multiplied by the maximum of the lead time and uh, minus the average sales multiplied by the average of the lead time. So we're going to jump back into Excel for the next method to give you what are the difference. It will be much easier than in this presentation. Okay, so now let's go back into the Excel file. You have multiple methods. I really recommend you to download this file and practice with me to make sure you get it. <laughs> and then you can apply to your products. So the first one, so I'm going to use the same data. You have monthly sales and you have 10 shipments deliveries over the last 12 months. And we're going to use this example. I recommend you to use always the same 
way to get the information. It could be per month or per week. And in the formula, be very careful to always use like only days, only months, or only week according to uh, the, the, the data you have. In this example, like the old school way, <laughs> old, old school method, uh, we just multiply the average sales. So the average sale is just the total of sales divided by 365 days. And we're going to multiply by safety, like a manual safety, 15, for example. And we do have, for example, 493 days. And the real point is just the safety stock plus the average sales multiplied by the average lead time. Uh, if you have a forecast, you cannot replace the average sales by the forecast. You don't necessarily need to use the last 12 months, but I won't have much time to explain this formula. <laughs> this is not the most important one. Then we do have the average max method. The average max method is using um, the maximum lead time and the maximum sales. So we need to have, how do we get the maximum sales? First of all, we did, we get the maximum per month. In this case, it's like 12, 1200 uh, units. And then, yeah, because you can keep all the formulas in months. So let's, you can also switch into days. In this specific example, we're going to convert uh, this maximum sales month into daily. We divide by 30.5. We do have 39, 39 sales per day. And we do the same, we use the maximum lead time, whereas the longest shipment and the, this shipment was 40 days. Okay, so at the end we have the formula and to apply the formula, we do multiply maximum sales daily by maximum lead time minus average sales multiplied by average lead time. So this formula is quite efficient to protect. If you have a lot of history, you, you will make sure that you will cover the worst scenario in the past, which is good. The problem with this one is, for example, let's say you had one like very, very uh, late shipment, for example, 100 days. You see like, boom, you have one like this. If you have this kind of situation, your safety stock will be massive. And so I, I think that that's a quite risky uh, methodology. It will be the same if you have like, for example, one specific month with one customer wants to get, for example, 10,000 and you will have unnecessary safety stock because of that. So. I would, if you use this formula, I don't recommend this formula, but if you use it, I will at least make sure that you cap the, the lead time and the max sales by, for example, okay, if it's more than 50, then I keep 50, something like that. Okay. So that's the easy way for safety stock. Then now we are going to more advanced solution and this solution are method three, four, five, and six. In this solution, we're going to use the same data and we're going to use what we call the normal distribution. So what is the, the normal distribution? This is like a mathematical law that will give you a probability to uh, basically supply the demand to, um, to reach the demand. And for example, if you, for example, if your average sales is, for example, 100 quantity per day, your probability with the normal distribution will tell you that, okay, if you sell 100 per day, your probability to sell more than 100 is 50% and your probability to sell less than 100 quantity per day is as well 50%. Okay. So you have uh, as many chance to sell more or less. And the more you are close to the average, the more the, the probability is high. You know, like if you are very, very far from uh, the 100, for example, your probability to sell 1000 quantity is very, very low and your probability to sell zero or one or two quantities is very low as well. Okay. So the, pro the normal distribution is quite common. Uh, for safety stock. Uh, this is a sim what we call a symmetric mm -hmm. distribution. And this, uh, this normal distribution is also very, um, very easy to use. That's why I recommend this solution to start using safety stock. I'm going to tell you after the limitation of this uh, distribution and uh, what are the other uh, poss possibility for that. But I love it because it's very simple and you just have to give, like there is a formula in Excel. For example, if you say, I want to reach 90% of my demand, you have this formula called norms and norms invert <laughs> that will give you the, the, the result. So if I change this number to, for example, 95, that will give me 1.64. Okay. And this number will help me to cover against uncertainty. So if I want, if I don't want to, to have any uh, safety, I, let's say I want to reach like this point 50%, let's go to 50. It will say, okay, you don't need any safety stock. You just multiply by zero. Okay. But in this specific example, you're going to use 90% and now we're going to use the mathematical formula. So in the first method, now that you know more about the normal distribution <laughs> that was quick, but I think that it was necessary. 
The first method, and that's a method I really recommend, it's only based that you, you only have uncertainty regarding the daemon. So we are not using any, um, any variation for the lead time, we just use the average lead time. When we talk about the lead time, it's very important that you also consider the review period. Like if you wait one week, uh, to uh, if you order only once a week, you have to be, ca be careful that you consider this one week in into the total lead time uh, when you do when you talk about this specific lead time. So we're going to use the uh, the average lead time, and the formula is very simple. It's Z. What is Z? Z is the coefficient service. What is the the coefficient service is the one we were talking just before. So you can define in this file, for example, okay, I want ninety five percent, and my coefficient service will be one point six four. Let's go back to ninety percent. 1.28 and then what we need to have we need to have the demand standard deviation what is the demand standard deviation this is the standard deviation of your demand it could be per month per week or per day but just be careful always to use the same <laughs> the same period then at the end the formula is that we're going to use multiply this coefficient of service multiply by the standard deviation multiply by the root square or the average lead time so this formula is quite simple in this specific case, we do have uh, the result is 194 days, and it's only based if you have uncertainty on the demand, you don't have any uh, uncertainty on your lead time. So this is quite easy to, to implement, and that's the first solution with the real point around 1300 quantities. Then we have the method number four, and the method number four will only be based on the, uh, the uncertainty on the lead time. So you can say that, okay, you don't have uncertainty on the, on the sales, it's just on the lead time. In this specific one, we do the opposite. We multiply the same coefficient, for example, 1.28, multiply by the average sales. So you have to be very careful in the formula. In the average sales, I'm using the average sales per month. So for the lead time, standard deviation, I need to use it in months, not in days. That's a very classic mistake. I'd better be careful warning here. If you, you cannot combine average sales in months and lead time in days or the opposite. Be very careful. I've, I've done these mistakes by myself so many times. <laughs> so be careful. So you just multiply the average sales, multiply by the standard deviation of the lead time in months. And then you will have this formula and the result is quite similar in this specific case. It's 180 three days. That's the method number four. Uh, to be honest, we don't use a lot of this method because uh, most of the time the challenge is in the demand and we don't have enough um, quality data and reliable data for the lead time. Then the number five, you consider that you have uncertainty on the demand and the lead time, but they are independent. What do I mean by independent is the uncertainty of the demand is not responsible or the lead. For example, if you have a lot of delays, they are not responsible for the variation of the demand. So that's something, uh, there are two independent programs and that's, I think, the most classic problems. But for example, if you work in a factory or you have like, you have a monopoly and you are the only factory in the world to produce something, you could also have an impact on the demand if you don't have a right lead time uh, from your suppliers, for example. So in this one, it's a bit more complex. You can check my, my formula in Excel after. Uh, but basically, uh, we're going to use as, uh, Z multiplied by the square root of the average lead time multiplied by the demand, <laughs> demand standard deviation multiplied by the demand st standard deviation squared plus the average sales multiplied by the lead time standard deviation squared. It, clearly, it's, it's a bit more complex, but you just need to apply the formula and make sure you always use all either months or days uh, units to make sure that you don't mix uh, these two. Okay, so that will give you obviously more safety stuff because you want to consider in the same time demand and uh, lead time uh, uncertainty. And the last one is method number six. Uh, this one we consider that the demand and the lead time are dependent and if one uh, if one is not good, the, the other one will be impacted as well. And it's, this one looks even more complex, but it's not. You just have to do the sum of method three and method four. Okay, so at the end, we have even more safety. We have 370. So that was the six methods I, I wanted to explain to you. Obviously, they are quite different and they have different results. You can see like from the average max, we have 423 days. Why? Because that will get, uh, take you the, the worst scenario. This one and this one are quite safe and this one are getting uh, into more safety because they want to consider in the same time the lead time and the uncertainty on the demand. So now let's talk about the normal distribution limits because yes, this is this is a very simple method, but this is not a perfect method as well. I love simplicity, that's why I recommend it. 
Uh, but yes, you have to be aware that first of all, uh, the, the percentage of the target, the percentage of service we are using 90% is not your real service. When you define 90%, this is like a mathematical law, but I can tell you, you have so many, uh, so many events that can impact your service that don't seem because you put 90% that you will have 90%. You need to, si to simulate and you need to track and uh, make sure you optimize uh, in the future. The second one is it's not applicable for all demand profiles. For example, the normal distribution doesn't work very well with very low sales, but to be honest, it's very <laughs> difficult to, to cope with very low sales anyway. Uh, then it's not very like it, it doesn't consider any uh, seasonal uh, event if you have a strong seasonality and you will have a tendency to uh, underestimate the risk of extreme cases. For example, if you sell huge quantity uh, for one specific customer or if you have massive uh, delays with one of your shipments, which is also good sometimes because you don't want to consider because of one event much more safety stock for the rest of the year. So at the end, yes, this isn't perfect. I will recommend at least to use different service targets uh, using the ABC uh, XYZ classification. Uh, for example, if you had one target for one group of products for all your products, I will at least switch to maybe ABC classification. You can watch my video ABC classification first. And then if you want to go further, I recommend also to consider the level of uncertainty with what we call X, Y, Z and having different targets for different products. You could have target that will improve the service or you could have target that will improve the cash flow and the profits. That's another topic. And if you want to know more about this methodology, I recommend you to watch my next video about the analysis A, B, C, X, Y, Z. Okay. So obviously you have more methodologies to improve your, your safety stock and your inventory levels. You could use the binomial uh, distribution, the Poisson distribution, the McKinsey method, the Grizzly method. You can also combine all of them. I've been working on so many different models and, and over the last 15 years, I was working with the MIT for, for two years and we were testing all of these methods. I can just tell you that the more you get into complexity, the more you, you're going to lose people and the more the quality of your data is important. So. I will just recommend it to keep it very simple and the future will be to use machine learning and what, what is going to do machine learning is going to simulate all the different models to make sure that every single item has the perfect model and also the perfect classification. You won't have to do all of this manually, but 99.9% .9 of the companies are not ready for that. You need first to focus on the quality of the data and keep it very simple with the right foundation. And that was the goals of this uh, specific uh, tutorial. So now the question is how to choose the right method. The data reliability and the quality of your data is the more is more important than the method. If you don't have any uh, lead time or shipment lead time, uh, that's going to be very very complex. So keep it as simple as the quality of your data. If you have very low volumes only, the the average or min max method could be enough for the beginning at least. If you have a, if you don't have a lot of experience in the supply chain world. Then if you have high volumes, the normal dis distribution for me is totally fine. You can also, if you don't have any uh, data or lead time, I recommend to choose method number three. And I always recommend you to track your performance and adjust your parameters, your service level uh, target to make sure that you don't overestimate or underestimate your value of safety stock. So please make sure to enjoy my file below the video. And if you want to go further, then I will recommend to apply this methodology into your full uh, database with all your products. This is just, for example, one example from my inventory management expert course uh, to apply on uh, like thousands of products and make sure that you optimize your inventory level per products and not globally. So now I have an action plan for you. First, you download the Excel, then you choose the right method. Then you compare with your current safety stock values. I will recommend always to adjust the major deviation, the 2080. I also recommend to do this calculation automatically every day and every week at least to track the performance with the right KPI and then to optimize and to tune these parameters to get closer to this famous balance point between service level and inventory level. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave me a comment if you have uh, any questions and also please make sure uh, to subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'm going to publish a lot of videos and tutorials and Excel with example to optimize your inventory level and service. Uh, we recommend you to check the EOQ uh, formula, 
the a analysis A, B, C, X, Y, Z, obviously. And also if you want to optimize your, your stock quickly, I have 11 solutions for you and also all the KPIs you need. And if you want to go to the next level, I have a free workshop coming very soon to uh, reduce your inventory and your shortage. I'm going to share my tools, my Excel and the 13 parameters uh, you need to master. So if you like my pedagogy, feel free to join. I have all the details below the video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and I see you very soon for another video.